Hello all and welcome to a brand new episode of AK Talks. If you're wondering about the change in background, it's because of a few close reviews I got over my last video, due to which right now I'm in an experimenting phase. Keeping up with the day-to-day -day account of all the events happening around our world has become more of a need in today's time than a want. But if human experience has taught us something, it's that every single thing in the whole wide world has something negative attached to it as well. There is a big problem with the consumption of information presented to us solely in the form of news channels. It's like junk food, except for affecting us physically, junk news affects us mentally. And these days, it's utterly hard to take the news seriously when you switch on a television and this appears. Viewers uh, would like uh, another glimpse of uh, Temur. Uh, is it possible to get him, uh, you know, and and you know, if he can say, uh, uh, give a flying kiss to our viewers or just say bye to them? Daud Ibrahim ka pair, sir raha hai. Ab jihad par Z News ki ye exclusive padtal. Aakhir pyar ke naam par jabran dharm parivartan ka khel kyu chal raha? Drug do, drug do, drug do, drug do, drug do. Mujhe drug do, mujhe drugs do. Wo kehti hai. With this, we come to the topic of our discussion today. The reliability of Indian news channels and why is it not that high as some people would think so. So, without any further ado, let's begin. The Constitution of India protects freedom of speech and freedom of the press. Critics, however, state that press freedom in India is restrained and that the government only allows speech that supports it or the prevailing ruling party. In 2020, India's press freedom ranking dropped to 142 out of 180 countries in the Press Freedom Index, an annual ranking of countries published by Reporters Without Borders, an international non-governmental organization dedicated to safeguard the right to freedom of information. Journalism in India remains a risky pursuit. India ranks 13th among countries where journalists are murdered and the killers just walk free without any consequences. This crisis has been seen more apparent during the COVID-19 situation. The BJP government has gone so far as to petition the Supreme Court to stop the newspapers from publishing any information regarding this crisis. Such antics altogether have led to the rise of Godi media, a term referring to sensationalist channels that, instead of practicing honest journalism, traffics in motivated fake news and inflammatory stories, often untrue, that supports the agenda of the Bharti Janata Party, leading central and state governments, and media-owning corporate houses. TV and news channels that have been termed as Godi media running channels are Z News, Times Now, Republic TV, Aztec, ABP News, Sudarshan News, CNN News 18, and India TV. So, what is it? This issue is the true reason for accurate information to be hidden from the eyes of the Indian public. Furthermore, it's quite sad to see how the Indian government is treating journalists with unguarded hostility, especially during this time when we need true and accurate information to help us and guide us to be a beacon of light for us during such a global pandemic. This needs to improve. This hostility needs to stop. It is no surprise that in a country where freedom of press is only by name, that the circulation of fake news and fabricated data runs very, very high. India has been dealing with fake news for a long time and many television news organizations have been contributing to it. One such news organization is Z News. Z News has been criticized, fact-checked and called out over the course of many years due to their inaccurate and one-sided reporting. Like on fake report on Daud Ibrahim's property, how Narendra Modi's ascent to power was predicted almost 400 years ago and even the coronavirus pandemic, wherein they had to issue an official apology. The great demonetization of 2016 is another example of this, wherein the government claimed that this move was done with the purpose of removing black money, putting a curb to corruption and ensuring transparent transactions, etc, etc. Going to the next level, however, 
People said that the new currency notes will have nano GPS chips which will enable us to track the currency if it goes to the wrong hands. Not just social media, but many national news channels also reported such news, including the very famous and previously mentioned Z News. What we do know is that demonetization was a badly planned mishap and a cardiac stroke to the Indian economy due to which it is still suffering. And uh, it's almost funny to see that how the Indian media promoted during that time that the reason for demonetization was to promote e-banking. Like, okay. Fake news not only affects the rise of bad decisions but deaths as well which you all must be aware from the mob lynching cases which occurred due to the various fake news reports which circulated on social media and news channels. This sets a very scary precedent into whoever would want to pursue journalism in the future. India or any other country where politics holds a special dominance, whenever you switch on television to watch the news, you feel a sense of insecurity in your mind whether the news you are watching at that moment is true or politically biased. And if you do have this feeling, you are not wrong to feel so. Though not officially, the newspapers and news channels in India are divided into two parts, anti-government and pro-government. NDTV, Mirror Now and to some extent India Today are anti-government which means they question those who are in power irrespective of the political party. The rest of the major news channels like ABP, Aaj Tak, India TV, Times Now etc are pro-government. To put it simply, these news channels are just profit-making businesses. And what do profit-making businesses do? They do whatever is best for their business. And who is the biggest client of the media house? The government. Such biased reporting is just another step being taken towards the death of Indian democracy. One needs to keep this thought in mind that if you can't exercise your freedom, you are inviting tyranny at your threshold. The only way to stop that tyranny is to have independent thoughts. Media has the power to make the guilty innocent and the innocent guilty. This power is easily acquired by them because they control the mind of the masses. Let this power be used for the right purposes and for good. Despite massive growth in the Indian media industry, the lack of quality and diversity of Indian news channels shows a growing disconnect between the general public and the issues which are most important to them. Many number of studies conducted over a period of time have come to one conclusion. Upper caste men are grossly overrepresented, while women and lower castes have almost minimal representation. Such a similar case could not be more apparent following the death of beloved actor Sushant Singh Rajput and the investigation regarding drugs which arose from that tragedy. I mean, India had 60,575 cases of coronavirus in just one day. But all Republic TV cared about was that Rhea Chaturvati was watching their own channel from her home. Like, wow. जो टीवी चल रहा है उनका यानी कि वो अपडेट ले रही हैं कि क्या कुछ हो रहा है क्या किस ये देखिए और, और जितना मैं यहाँ से देख पा रही हूँ रिपब्लिक भारत चल रहा है देखिए जितना मैं यहाँ से देख पा रही हूँ समझ पा रही हूँ आप भी देख पा रहे होंगे कि इस वक्त टीवी चल रहा है रिपब्लिक भारत चल रहा है और इस वक्त जो हलचल है इस घर में हम देख पा रहे ऑल ऑफ दिस इज स्ट्रेट आउट ऑफ अ कर जोहर मूवी वेर लॉजिक इज थ्रोन आउट ऑफ द विंडो एंड क्लैमर मसाला इज ऑल हाइट अप इन द एबसेंस ऑफ डाइवर्सिटी मीडिया एज एन इंस्टीट्यूशन स्टार्ट टू डिगे Instead of acting as a fourth pillar of democracy, it becomes limited to the fringes as a mouthpiece for a few limited and privileged individuals. To be able to function effectively, newsrooms must fix their diversity problem. Matters close to the heart of the society as a whole must be addressed and only the people who deserve to be given a platform should be given a voice in matters. Thank you so much for tuning in to yet another video. Don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you still haven't. See you next time with a brand new video on a brand new topic.